Hey, today we're doing part two of my IKEA greenhouse cabinet tour. What happened was I filmed the first part, if you saw my first video, and I basically changed the design like immediately after. So I'll show you how I have it set up. I'm really happy with the setup. Um, also in the meantime, my cabinet got Western flower thrips. So basically all of my Ethereum have uh, Western flower thrips and I'm in the process of treating them. So I'll also walk you through what I'm kind of doing to deal with that. So let's get started. So I will go through how I have this cabinet set up first. So similar to the first one, I have a um, hole drilled in the floor. Um, I have a desk grommet that is uh, to kind of fill in the hole, but still allow the cords to pass through. I don't have as much supplemental lighting in this cabinet because the anthuriums don't really need it. So I have one 24 watt um, Barina grow light on this side and it is attached with a clip that's screwed into the like into these little holes that are uh, for attaching the brackets to put the shelves on in the cabinet so that actually works quite well um, i wasn't sure if the bigger 24 watt lights would fit in the corners but they actually fit quite nicely so that has been working really well the cord can kind of like pass through these slots on the shelf and then i'm using these little uh, plastic cord organizers to keep the cord on the edge and not just like flopping all over the place. These I've kind of reused from previous so they're not as secure as they, uh, as they could be. So I have the cord running up along the top of the cabinet. And then what I have is two of the 10 watt lights. I could have done more of the 24 watt lights on this side, but I kind of figured that might be too much for the anthuriums, um, especially because on this shelf, they'll end up being quite close to the light and I want to minimize burning. The cord goes through the shelf and then it goes to a second 10 watt light that kind of covers the anthuriums on this shelf and on the bottom. So again, those are screwed on into the little holes that are meant to support the shelves. And these 10 watt lights in particular like fit perfectly in this little um, diagonal spot. This, this cord I should have like uh, tucked away with one of those organizers, but I think I'm running out. So previously I had this like trellis on the back of the cabinet, this like black trellis with um, pots with hooks, but I just found one, it was hard to clean in behind and two, I was just running out of space and my anthuriums are getting too big and heavy. So I've replaced it with these clear acrylic shelves that are like diagonal. Um, and I got these from a, a company called Plantal Support in, um, they're based in Canada. They also sell these larger um, 3D printed brackets to go with it. So it has a bit more support. Um, I believe it comes with zip ties so you can like zip tie this together. Uh, it does have holes here, but honestly, I haven't found that is really necessary. So these are awesome. This is the thicker version. They sell two, one slightly thinner one, but I wanted the thicker one so it could support all of the weight of the anthuriums. And these have been fantastic. I have three shelves. I have two of these long diagonal ones and then one of the uh, corner pieces, which I use for the longer anthuriums that kind of like drape down. So I've been very, very happy with this setup because you know, some of the anthuriums, like they just need a little bit of extra vertical space, especially when they start putting out flowers and stuff. That's pretty much it for setup on this cabinet. I don't have any fans. Um, I do have weather stripping, this black weather stripping. I'm not sure how well you'll be able to see that. I just have this black weather stripping going along either side of the door. I have it also on the outside of the door. So all I need to do is like uh, push them together and then it closes the gap. And that's very effective for maintaining this at about um, I want to say it's like 70% average humidity, which seems to be uh, pretty good for 
these anthuriums. My queen anthurium is happy, so that tells me it's probably good for everyone else. Let me stand back. Ooh, yes, she still looks very good. <laughs> now, you might be able to see that she has some damage on the top. That was kind of my first indication that something was wrong. So basically, thrips got into this leaf as it was uh, still curled up. So I couldn't really tell they were there. And then as it was unfurling, um, you kind of see that like damage pattern. It's kind of like scratch marks. You can see it especially good. It's kind of caused some deformation in the leaf down here. It's kind of like a silvery scratch pattern. And I knew this wasn't from physical damage because usually with phys physical damage, it'll be more scratches like this. Like you see that scratch, that would probably be from me touching the leaf. But those very superficial scratches, almost like lightning bolt pattern, those are most likely pests. And spider mites are more, um, it's not so, I find with spider mites, it's not so much like this lightning bolt type pattern it's more of just like speckles with spider mites so i knew something was up and then of course i saw some western flower thrips larvae which i actually have spotted a few on here so i can show you what they look like they look kind of like these little tan colored wormy things and you can see them moving now i think you'll be able to see some of my good guy mites on here as well so they are helping to control the population but one of the things i do is i just squish these guys whenever i find them so these are all just the larvae um, i'm not seeing any adults on here which is good but larvae are also not not ideal so this was the second plant I found the thrips on and I knew basically that everyone was uh, was infected. But at least with the cabinet, you can kind of, they're at least partially quarantined from the other plants and I knew I could just kind of treat them all together. So what I ended up um, getting once I realized they were kind of throughout the whole cabinet, I got these Orias, no, yeah, Orias insidiosis. Um, they're called pirate bugs that just come in brand and I've released them in the cabinet. I was seeing them for like the first week. Now I haven't really seen them, um, but they were definitely going after the thrips really well. I often see thrips and they'll be like totally gone. Um, you won't see any for like a couple weeks and then all of a sudden they'll return. Um, this is Lutherii, I think has very long like reptilian looking leaves i i do like this plant what i don't like is this like weird uh way that it grows like anthuriums don't usually have such a long internodal space so i'm like not loving that as much as i thought it has interesting inflorescence this one looks like a little chili pepper but after the queen anthurium i did also find some thrips on this guy, unfortunately. Sometimes the textured anthuriums are worse because they can hide in the cracks, but I'm not seeing any so far. This anthurium is like, you think it would be shiny, but it's actually more matte. And it's not the easiest. Basically, if I water it a little bit late, I get leaf, leaves browning and yellowing like this. But at least I don't see any thrips on this one. One thing I find with thrips is even if you have them on a whole bunch of plants, it's usually only like one or two or three plants where they're really like uh, breeding and where a lot of them are like coming from. So certain plants, it's fairly easy to get rid of the thrips off of, but then I'll have other plants where it takes many, many successive treatments to uh, actually get rid of them. So along with the um, Arias insidiosus. Um, I'm also using Swartzky mites to um, take care of the thrips. These are ones that I breed myself and you can check out my tutorial on that if you want to see how I do it. This has been very effective, especially in this higher humidity environment. I'm always seeing the, uh, the mites on my plants. So I know that they help a lot. I guess I'll move to this second shelf. Um, just while we're talking about thrips, the third thing that I did is I introduced some Scamidus mites. I forget exactly how to say it. 
Uh, but they're a soil dwelling mite. They they come in this like medium that you can just kind of put on the top of your pots. And then they live in the first couple like inches of substrate. And then they eat any thrips pupae that fall into the soil to complete that part of their life cycle. In a high humidity environment, you may also see them uh, actually on like the base of your plants and the leaves and stuff too which is great because they're just general like predatory mites and they're really, really good for taking care of uh, pretty much anything you don't want on your plants. So yes, this is NSC red crystallinum grown from a seedling. Now I'm fairly certain there is some sort of mutation up with this seedling. See how it's got kind of those like specklies in the leaf and just like odd coloration. This one too has like odd speckles, like it just looks a little bit off. And this leaf that's coming in, is just kind of like longer and skinnier than they normally are. Same with this one. So I don't know if this is like variegation per se or just some other kind of mutation, but it's definitely like just not growing like a normal uh, anthurium. And my mom actually has a uh, red crystallinum seedling from the same batch and it doesn't look like this. So I'm very curious to see what this one will look like when it grows older. But I mean, as far as the red goes, I'm glad that's coming off like really well. The veins are super, super red. The stems are red and they stay this way for like a long time because this leaf is fully hardened off. So even for a baby that's not mature yet, really, really happy with how this one is doing. Okay, now next little plant. I know this one doesn't look like much, but this one is actually a Anthurium king clarinervium was doing really good. And then uh, basically the base started rotting. Fortunately, I caught it in time and it is um, getting new growth on it. So I, I'm not so worried that it's gonna die, but it is kind of scary because I paid quite a bit for that. And this is actually my second king clarinervium. And yeah, really do not want that one to die. This next little beauty, don't know if you can tell um, the color is like really interesting this is a papillaminum hybrid of some sort from bags plants so it's like a self cross with one of his uh, anthurium papillaminums that is like really nice and dark and so far i'm really happy with how this one is growing with the like minimal veining it's just very interesting and yeah excited to see how that one grows I have most of my anthuriums in self-watering pots, by the way. I um, find that they just work so, so well. And the substrate I use is um, Mineral Magic Mix from Crystal Star Nursery. It's my absolute favorite. This, this is actually a good example of uh, a plant that the self-watering pots have saved. I don't know if you remember my um, unboxing from uh, Equigenera. So this is apparently Anthurium ophultarianum. And this guy, um, I forget what I did when I first imported him, but he basically almost almost completely died. So I just stuck him in a self-watering pot. It not only did not die, but it's actually starting to give me some leaves that are a little bit more sizable. So I'm actually quite pleased with that. Constantly have to shuffle these guys around because otherwise you will not be able to see them properly. But this is a, what is this one again? This is Anthurium papillaminum crossed with Dark Mama from Wee Pot Plants. So this one has basically grown out from a very small plant. It's still in a small pot, but it's actually growing and getting really dark, beautiful leaves. And this one you can see has that kind of beautiful, uh, like pinching in that the papillaluminums get. Uh, here's an example of my other, like this one is supposed to be just a pure papillaluminum and it's got like those interesting like lobes on the top and then it kind of pinches in and you can see that this one is like kind of starting to do that, which I'm very pleased with. Just do a quick check for thrips larvae because this one definitely also had them, but I think that is one there, but significantly less versus what I had like two weeks ago. So the beneficial insects are definitely doing their job, but what people don't tell you, it takes actually, you know, a while to get rid of thrips. So I basically just like try 
not to panic if I see them. It's about getting like less and less and less and we're making progress. So I'm not, um, not as anxious about it as maybe I would have been in the past. This beautiful plant is Philodendron heterocraspidon, I think. This is a very, very interesting philodendron. It's my only philodendron in here, but it is known to be a bit more fussy. It's got beautiful texture on the leaves. Maybe I need to pull this one out too, so you can see it without it being backlit. I'm just worried about tipping over my plants because when I was cleaning my cabinets, I did that way too many times. So I'll put you here beside the other long guys. Oh yeah. See, it is a very, very, very nice plant. Definitely more on the difficult side, but pretty much worth it, I think, in my opinion. You can see some like browning and yellowing on the edges. Again, doesn't like to dry out all the way, but um, I was pretty much at the point of like getting rid of this plant and then it put out these nice leaves. So I'm like, okay, I guess you can stay. They're pretty nice and dark and the texture is really, really good. I actually think I prefer this to like a Patricia or Patricia. This one is a little bit cleaner. It almost has like beachy eye like vibes to it so quite happy with uh with this guy I'm, I'm surprised at how how well he's done because he didn't really grow at all for a while there and no thrips on him so far they seem to prefer the uh anthurium so that is a plus so that is everything that lives on this shelf for now just another look at that um pepilaluminum cross with dark mama you can see how much anthuriums look different depending on what lighting they're in so definitely recommend if you're buying anthuriums like look you can be kind of fooled see how dark that is and then it's like you put it in the light it's a lot lighter just very very interesting plants so this is anthurium moodianum so this was actually the first plant that i noticed thrips on and i noticed it because you can see how this leaf just kind of looks wonky when this leaf was coming out and developing that it just you know it just looked odd i don't know if you can see the the damage doesn't show up like quite as well on this one but you can just see that the leaf grew in kind of wonky because the thrips were in there while the leaf was developing so then it's like if they suck the juices and then it doesn't develop um, doesn't develop proper properly so what i did with this one I took it out of the greenhouse cabinet, hoping that this was the only one that was infected. It wasn't, but um, it was small enough to put in like a bin so I could keep it isolated and quarantined with the Swartzky mites. And um, usually to like determine whether thrips are fully gone, usually the best place to look is one, the leaves that, it, that they were kind of on heavily before and also the new leaves because they really, really love that like new growth. Can we just take a minute to appreciate what a gorgeous color that new leaf is? The speckles on here are the beneficial mites, but there are no thrips and no thrip damage. So that's a good indication that this plant is now thrips free. And it's actually been like several weeks since I haven't seen any thrips. I've kept like a spreadsheet before and I've literally had plants go like four weeks without seeing a single thrips or thrips larvae and then they'll reappear. So I basically have to wait like four weeks before I can confirm that something is uh, thrips free. I'm just, I'm putting him back in with the rest of the anthuriums because even though it hasn't been quite four weeks, I just figure everyone's kind of at the same stage right now. So it doesn't matter. This one should be a lot bigger by now too. I kind of like almost killed it. And again, I think the self-watering pot thing saved it for me. Uh, this is a, Anthurium bessier af. Now, if you are on the fence about these guys, like I was, and, and are like, I don't see what's the difference between just like this and a crystallinum. These are definitely different. Like the, sh the sheen is very different. And when the new leaves are coming in, they have this like oily blue color to them. They're very naturally dark with like a blue reflect. These are um, just, fantastic like i i'm a big fan of this anthurium this is another one that i saw thrips larvae on but i'm not seeing any right now so that is a win the beneficials seem to be doing their job i'll probably go and check the backs of the leaves after this too see this is a good example again of uh thrips damage it's like you don't even notice it at first but when you 
look up close, you can see that like silvery spider webby damage, particularly with the Western flower thrips. It's a very superficial damage. And this one is getting an inflorescence and I would really hope I can get some pollen from here because I think he would be, I mean, I think almost any anthurium cross with this guy would be beautiful. So if I can find another dark one to go with it, that would be amazing. Um, I did kind of already show you this, anthurium papillaluminum. Anyways, this, this one is really nice. I love the shape. It's not um, as dark. It's really hard with papillaluminums. Basically, they're just, they're just highly vari variable. So based on like where they're collected, um, they can look uh, different from each other. And I have no idea if this is like a pure papillaluminum or if it's a hybrid or whatever. I, I'm not really sure of the origins of it. But anyways, I like it and I am really hoping I can do some crosses with it. It does have an inflorescence, but this is actually like the third or fourth inflorescence it's had. And each time it gets them, they just kind of like yellow before it either becomes receptive or gives me any pollen. So I actually haven't gotten like anything from this plant yet, which is unfortunate, but some anthuriums just take a little bit longer to mature. You can see I've had him for a little bit. He's got some great aerial roots on the base and he's done well since he's been in a self-watering pot. Oh, I took this guy out and I almost forgot about him. This is Anthurium peltigerum. You may also remember this from the import video from Equigenera. Uh, came in looking so just like a crumpled piece of tissue paper, um, but this was one my mom ordered. Hers is looking absolutely fantastic. And this is a baby she gave me from hers. You can see the leaves uh, started out and they were like super, super tiny. And now it's actually starting to get some size to it. This is honestly like a very unique anthurium, which I, th I feel like is saying a lot because a lot of anthuriums to me kind of just end up looking the same. Now you can tell on this one too that it's had thrips damage because of that like yellow discoloration and kind of you can see how the leaf is deformed at the top. Uh, I don't see any active, um, any active larvae on here. So again, this is a good sign that the beneficial insects are doing their job. This is just like a, a plant that got infected, but it's not like patient zero. I think the Anthurium wariquianum might actually be where a lot of the thrips are like breeding and coming from. And then ones like this just happen to be close by and they've gotten them, but it's been much easier to get rid of it off of like this plant than it has the one that kind of started and where they were hanging out the most. Now onto the bottom shelf. I'll start with this guy. This is a Anthurium Delta Force hybrid. I got this as a top cutting. The original leaves were obviously more mature than this one. The one leaf, um, I have a picture, it was like really flat, it was like that. But obviously when you have a top cutting, um, it didn't have much in the way of roots, so the, the newest leaf is not gonna be as mature. But you can see it has some good roots now in the pot and it has a very healthy new leaf. So it's only gonna get like better and better from here and hopefully gets that like nice wide sinus with the ripply edges. Uh, I'm not sure what it's a hybrid of. It could even be Delta Force like crossed with itself or with Clarinervium, but it's showing lots of traits of Delta Force. Decker, are you drinking my water while I'm not looking? That is very rude. How could you do this? He's so rude, isn't he, River? Unbelievable. No remorse. Anyways. This beautiful anthurium in here, very easy, easily recognizable. I actually don't normally keep my anthurium luxurians in the cabinet. I actually normally grow it outside of the cabinet, but I thought for today, I might as well put him with the rest of my anthuriums. He has also had Western flower thrips, but I don't think I've seen them come back. So I am happy with that. Another step that I take if I find a leaf that has like lots of larvae and adults, I will rinse the leaf off in the sink and spray with um, horticultural oil, which is pretty much just like mineral oil. The ratio is 10 milliliters to uh, one liter of water. And it actually also gives the leaves a nice shine, but doesn't leave like such a sticky residue compared to like neem oil. So the rinsing mineral oil, Swirtsky mites, plus the Orias insidiosus seems to be enough to 
have this one be thrips free. This one actually had thrips and was outside the cabinet long before the anthuriums inside the cabinet got thrips. So I know that it does work to get rid of them that way. And now we have this beautiful new leaf coming in. I love anthurium luxurians. It always comes off so good on camera too with that texture. I'm actually not a fan of hybrids of luxurians because I feel like the original is so good. So I don't usually think that the hybrids actually add anything or like improve on the original. This is a anthurium crystallinum red crossed with just a regular crystallinum, but it's actually maintaining that red veining and red petiole insertion quite well. It's not liking this self-watering pot because it doesn't have a wick. It's just like the uh, reservoir kind of sits in the water. So it has had some issues with root rot, unfortunately. So I, I lost a lot of the old leaves and then this one is a little bit smaller, but the color on it is just like fantastic. And no thrips larvae on it, so that's a win. I'll very quickly mention these guys. The, these are Discoria, I think species Mexicana that I am just perpetually killing. I don't know why they don't like me so much. It's like I get them and they just like instantly wither. Um, and then it's so hard to tell if they're just dormant or if they're totally dead. This one is like fat and this one is like shriveled. So I'm thinking this one at least has some hope. And this is Stefania um, Nova, might've been reclassified. Like it's a beautiful codex and shout out to Zero Year for, for making and like sending me this pot. I think it's rooted because it, it doesn't want to come out of the pot, but it just doesn't give me foliage. I have these in the anthurium cabinet because I know codex plants do like having them in high humidity can help to activate them. But yeah, I've just never really gotten like any leaves off this little guy. This is an anthurium pterodactyl. You can't really tell. I never used to have it in this cabinet. So this one actually got thrips really, really bad. Bad enough that I decided to cut off all of the leaves. Uh, I quarantined it in its own bin, added the Scamitis mites and the Swirtsky mites. And now the new growth has come out. Like uh, it's a little bit deformed, but I think that's just cause it's dry. I'm not seeing any of that like scratchy damage on it. So that is why he's in here today. I figured it's hard to know if he's like 100% clear. So he might as well stay with the anthuriums in here that I'm not entirely sure about yet. This plant, so this is the last one. This is, uh, what is this? This is Magnificum crossed with Dark Mama from Northern Plant Room on Instagram. Oh, it's not the last plant, I lied. Magnificum with Dark Mama, um, really happy with how this leaf is coming in. You can see it has a nice blue bluish reflect to it, which I personally really, really love with my anthuriums. The sinus is like pretty wide and the veins actually have like an interesting amount of like texture to them. This leaf has come out pretty well. They've been coming out. I don't know why this one came out so deformed. I know that can be caused by like a calcium uh, deficiency or something, but I mean, it's been getting the same feed and now this leaf is doing just fine. That's a little bit weird. This leaf looks like it might be on its way out, but you can see how nice and wide the sinus is, really taking those traits from uh, Dark Mama. And I'm not sure if um, Northern Plant Room Dark Mama is like a true Dark Mama, but it is like a very nice plant. So I'm quite happy with how that new leaf is coming in, especially compared to some of the old ones that we've had. You can see the ears are not completely even, but that's actually coming in really, really nice. And now this, this plant here, this is Ace of Spades. So Ace of Spades dark form crossed with Dark Mama. So same parents, same parent for the Dark Mama as that one. Uh, now these leaves are yellowing because this is a recent propagation. Um, my mom has the base. You can see where it's been cut and just the aerial roots are sticking into the soil, but you can actually look, it's getting a new leaf. So it must be rooting. And this guy actually, um, cause I know from the plant that my mom has actually has quite nice dark foliage on it. Uh, so I'm very happy. You can kind of see there's a healthy root in there. 
I'm very happy that this little propagation seems to be doing well. I was not, I did not even realize it had a new leaf coming. So that is everything in my anthurium cabinet right now. Now I do have a few anthuriums outside of my cabinet and I am planning to do a full tour soon. So stay tuned for that. Oh, I guess I'll do these honorable mentions. I used to have these strap leaf anthuriums in the cabinet, but I decided to move them to this spot kind of right beside because I know they don't need the humidity. This is a Wenlingrii. This is a new leaf on it and it's looking so good. These guys are so rubbery compared to like a uh, Vitarifolium. And then I have my pellet. Oh, oh, I knew that was gonna happen. It's growing and it really needs to be in a bigger pot. Uh oh, it's cause he was all out of water too. Well, anyways, you can see how he's doing in this self-watering pot. He really, really needs to be repotted, obviously. Um, this isn't the first time this has happened, so it's not super surprising. The foliage is a little bit curled. You can tell he's thirsty because of that. But anyways, I grew this out from like a very tiny cutting. Um, I used to have a very big pellet of florum. Basically, I propagated it and um, gave a lot of the cuttings away and just kept the very smallest one for myself. And now it's growing into a big plant again that I cannot keep up with. So yeah, I'm going to go clean this up, repot this guy. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this tour of my Anthurium cabinet. If you have any questions about how I put it together, let me know. Um, I'd also love to know how you keep your Anthuriums, whether you have it in a cabinet like this or you grow most of your Anthuriums just in room humidity or if you have a tent or something that you grow them in, let me, yeah, let me know. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.